On October 11th, 2018, just before 2 p.m., Surrey RCMP frontline officers responded to the 6700 block of 130th Street in Surrey for a report of a man who'd been shot. Despite life-saving efforts by RCMP officers, BCEHS, and the Surrey Fire Department, the male was pronounced deceased at scene. I had assumed conduct of the investigation and the victim was identified as 30-year-old Sumit Randawa of Surrey. Very quickly, the occupants of a black Hummer H3 and a blue Ford Focus were identified as being involved in the homicide. Investigators recovered the black Hummer nearby, however, the blue Ford Focus remains outstanding and investigators are still working on identifying who is responsible. I hit investigators continue to actively follow up on all avenues and all leads, but I hit still needs help from the public to further the investigation. It's nearing the two year anniversary of Mr. Rondawa's murder. The family of Mr. Rondawa is here today, appealing for help from the public, for any information that may help solve his murder. Here speaking on behalf of the Rondawa family is his sister, Sabrine. Two years ago, on October 11th, 2018, our family expected it to be a wonderful day. The youngest of our family was supposed to turn 30. He was supposed to celebrate his big day surrounded by the people that he loved. <clears throat> Instead, the people he loved stood around his home in complete horror, waiting for the first responders to tell him that Smeet was all right. But that moment of relief was never felt by Smeet's loved ones. Instead, they crumbled at the news that Smeet was no longer with them in this world. We were supposed to watch and cheer him on as he blew out his candles on his cake. Instead, we stood there as our world came crashing down around us as Smeet was brutally taken from us. I never imagined that we would have to live our lives without the man who was the foundation of our family. The one person who was the glue that held our family together. Smeet was truly one of the most loving and caring people you could ever meet. He always put the needs of others before his own. Following his death, our family came together in ways I'm so thankful for. We were blessed to hear all the stories of his kindness and generosity that we would have never known otherwise. These moments truly showed us how many lives Smeet had touched, how many people are affected by his absence. The people that did this did not just take Smeet's life, they left, they left the lives of his loved ones in utter chaos. They took a man from this world that would drop everything to help another person. I remember a neighbor saying how he helped her chase her trash cans during a storm, or how he would drive across town to simply deliver cupcakes to children at his nephew's school. He was that type of human being. He asked for nothing in return. He would give and give and give with no expectations from the people around him. He had the biggest heart and he was so full of life and love. He was one of those people that no matter the situation, you needed him, he would be there. Throughout his life, Smeet faced many challenges. As a child, he was hit by a car, but he never let such physical things hold him back. He overcame all the injuries he sustained and focused on physical activities such as wrestling and powerlifting. Looking at him, you would think he was intimidating due to his sheer size and his demeanor, but he truly was like a big teddy bear. His strength was matched by his love and his generosity. Whenever you were around him, he had a gift to make you feel special and loved. Everyone who knew him felt they had such a unique bond with him, and they did because he had the special ability to build these unique relationships with everyone he met. He had a contagious laugh that would fill the entire room, and you couldn't help but smile. They say you can assess a person's kindness and nature by how children react around them. It didn't matter if it was a niece, a nephew, a friend's child, they were drawn to him. He laughed with them, interacted with them as though he was a child himself. He was able to build loving and authentic relationships with everyone. Maybe because he was genuine and authentic no matter where he was or who he was with. He spoke his mind, he stayed true to himself and true to those he loved. He cared deeply for all of his family and friends in his life. Although he was the youngest, I always admired and looked up to him. We were so blessed to have him in our lives, even if it was just for 30 years. But being blessed is an understatement. 
It breaks our heart every single day that we have to wake up and realize that he's gone. When we remember that we will never see him become a husband and a father. Every day since October 11th, 2018, the day of his birthday, the day that someone violently murdered him, it has been a constant struggle to continue on without him. We cannot understand why someone could feel like it's their right to end another's life. We cannot understand why these cold-hearted murderers do not think about their actions, create a rippling effect on the peoples that are tied to the ones they take from us. Why would someone want to take such a beautiful soul? Who would want to do such a terrible thing? We cannot sleep. We cannot figure out how to go on. We cannot rest until there's justice for Smeet. We cannot feel at peace while his murderer walks free. We cannot stand by and watch these murderers inflict the same pain on other families. No other sister, no other mother, no other father, no other brother should have to suffer through this incomprehensible pain. Nobody else should have to request this type of help from their community as we're doing today. We are pleading with you, our community, asking for your help. Please, if anyone has any information at all, come forward. Even the smallest piece of information that seems insignificant can be useful. We urge you to come please report to IHEAD investigators or the RCMP. Thank you. So again, <coughs> pardon me. Again, investigators are asking anyone with information to contact IHIT. Even the smallest piece of information could help. We believe there are people out there with information that will help us. We're appealing to those people, to the friends, to the close associates of Mr. Randawa to do the right thing and contact IHIT. It's never too late to reach out and do the right thing. I can take your questions. Uh, at this time, I'm not aware that um, certainly anybody has been charged. Uh, however, what I can tell you that um, for the last two years, uh, since uh, Mr. Rindawa's death, investigators have certainly looked uh, at any and all suspects, any investigative leads. Um, if they've led to arrests, I'm unaware at this time. If those are developments that happen down the road, uh, certainly that would be something that we would be uh, looking to release. In terms of the investigation and the public about that? Ah, um, well, what I can tell you is that that Hummer was recovered just a couple of blocks away um, from the actual crime scene. Um, an investigation and an examination was done on that Hummer, and I do know that evidence was obtained from the examination of the Hummer. Uh, what else I can tell you is that the blue Ford Focus, it does remain outstanding. Um, so if uh, anyone still has outstanding CCT video or uh, dash cam video or remembers anything specific um, or sus suspicious about either one of those vehicles in the area at that time, they are encouraged to call IHIT. The description uh, that went out nearly two years ago has remained the same. Unfortunately, we do not have a license plate number. That's, again, uh, why we're encouraging anyone who maybe lives uh, in any uh, radius of that area, if they've got CCT video that they have yet to turn over to police, uh, please do so that we can have a look. And also, is I get concerned about you know, what happened, uh, what appears to be a recent re-escalation on of gun violence and uh, target homicide linked to organized crime in the region? Uh, well, certainly any gun violence and any homicide is concerning. Um, this one, we do believe it is related to the ongoing Lower Mainland gang conflict. Uh, that being said, it's targeted. Uh, it certainly is concerning, concerning as it was a brazen daylight shooting in a family neighborhood. Uh, it is unacceptable. People should be upset. And with that being said, we encourage these people to call us and help us out with this investigation.